questions and Tonight, I'd like to look at the review that he has in the workbook on chapters six through nine. Hopefully this won't take us too long and we might be able to get into uh, reading uh, the textbook on chapter 10, which is uh, the next portion to read. And just in case uh, I haven't said it before or need reminding, once we read a chapter in the book together, uh, even if I don't remember to say it, uh, the assignment for the following week would be the first section of the workbook, which includes uh, parsing and uh, the warm up exercises. Uh, also included is uh, or understood is that we should uh, look at the vocabulary and do whatever we need to to memorize those things. And before too long, I think I might have a, a vocabulary quiz, just 10 minutes maybe. Uh, we'll do it orally. I like to do that from time to time. Uh, okay. So maybe uh, uh, chapter 10 would be a good time to do that. All right. Uh, workbook, page 29, review of chapters 6 through 9. Uh, how do you identify the stem of a noun or an adjective? I'll, I'll try to do a lot of this verbally. Remove the ending. Remove, Remove the, the ending. Case. Yeah, stem is what's left. Uh, okay, who wants to tell us about uh, the direct object? What case is that? Limited. And the indirect object? Negative. Possession? Genitive. And what's the key word that you would use for genitive? Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Um, and the subject nominative. nominative case very good okay in the following sentences write the words that correspond to the given functions okay he's given us a sentence here agapaha thas tan kosmon ho which is a relative pronoun which we haven't gotten relative pronouns yet edoka he tells us that he she or it gave tan huian out to um, the translation of that subject a uh, sentence is uh, God loves the world, which uh, to which uh, see the iota subscript uh, that's uh, tells us it's dative and you use to with the dative to which he gave his What's son. That? Very good. What is the subject? Athea. Good. Athea. What is the direct object? We have two of them. The world. The world. And what's the other one? Uh, uh, Tan Huion. Yes, the sun. And what is the possessive word? Uh, Atu. Atu, yes. That's the genitive ending, U. That's right. It means of him. The next sentence, uh, hoi prophetai, the prophets, to Yesu of Jesus spoke, tois, anthropois, to the men, and tan lagan is uh, what they spoke, the word. What is the subject? Hoi prophetai. Yeah, hoi prophetai, uh, prophets. What is the direct object? Right, it's at the end, uh, the word. What is the possessive uh, word? To him. That's right, uh, of Jesus. And the indirect object? Voice anthropois. Right. Uh, to the men. Very good. Uh, how does the form of the article or any adjective correspond to the noun it modifies? That's degree in gender, case, and number. Very good, all three, yeah. Okay, next page. What's the difference between the substantival and adjectival functions of an adjective? First of all, that word substantival, you have any guesses as to what that means? 
functions as the subject yeah. of the sentence. Right. Okay. Okay. Is it, it places the subject? It's, is it what? Is it is it the subject or is it just a noun in general? It's a noun have, uh, in general. It can be the subject. Right. Yeah. yeah very good. substance. Substance is how I remember it to yeah. the noun it, or to it, the adjective. Right. It can be a predicate nominative. It can be a, a disconnected noun, but it's it's a noun. But an adjective can function as a noun. How can you tell when it does that? It has an article, but there is no noun. Yes, that's right. If the adjective has an article, but there's no noun there, then it's a substantival adjective. Um, I gave an example, the poor, uh, and then you would uh, supply a word such as people or men or ones, the poor people, the poor men, the poor ones, okay? Um, and usually it does have an, an article, the article with it. There are times when you have an, a, um, Anarthrous substantival adjective, but it's fairly rare. Mm. Okay, number six, how can you tell if an adjective is in the attributive position or predicate position? As something usually, the article. Usually the arrangement of the noun, the article, and the adjective. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Um, attributive is easy because if there's a noun present to modify, then it's attributed. Okay, but sure. what is the, uh, how can you tell if it's an attributive position or a predicate position? You'll have an article with both, both situations. How can you tell one from the other? The article belongs to the, to the adjective. Yeah, well, in, if, in, if it fits with the adjective, then it's attributive. If it's attributive, they're both going to have the article. True. Both use, both of your statements are correct, but I'm looking for the position of the article relative to the noun. There's there's a couple different patterns, and I'll confess, I keep a chart of this with me when I'm I translating. <laughs> um, well, uh, so if it's predicate, it's the article noun uh, adjective. And if yes. it's, or possibly uh, adjective, article, noun, most other things or pretty much everything else is going to be in the attributive. Okay. Okay. Sure. I'm not sure how what I said wasn't clear. If the article is with the adjective I would versus say with the noun. It, it, uh, with, with could mean hmm. before or after. Well, when, before it. Yeah. Immediately Otherwise, it, before it, without yeah. an, any intervening word. Sure. Okay. Hmm. Uh, that's that's okay. what it's like. If the uh, article is immediately before the adjective, it is, right. it's in the attributive position. If the article is not immediately before the adjective, okay. it's thought that was understood because in everything we've done, that's what the case has been. We've never yeah. had it any other way, so I didn't well, think we, to say that. Sometimes we have the article after the adjective. Well, then it's not. Then it's not going. But then it's not with the adjective. It's not the article doesn't belong okay, to that adjective. Okay, so you're th mm. you're thinking of with as meaning before. It functions with that adjective. It has to be before it. If it's after it, it's it's got to do with something else. Yeah. Okay. That's all. Right. That's a, that was my understanding as yeah. well. Okay. Okay. But I'd like to okay. um, emphasize the idea that it has to be immediately before it. Uh, oh, I see. What without you're any intervening word. Without any intervening words. That's yeah. okay. Yeah. There's a difference because you could have particularly multiple adjectives true or you could have an adverb maybe uh, but uh, and then we we have two positions for an attributive adjective mm -hmm. um, the first attributive is probably the more common one <clears throat> I gave an example a micra ecclesia the small church. That's the first attributive position. The article, mm -hmm. then the adjective, then the noun. 
or the second attributive position, you have the article, the noun, the article again, and then the adjective. And see the adjective is preceded immediately by the article in that case. So I don't know if we've had examples of this. Do we have, if we have multiple adjectives? It's, oh, um, we haven't really. No, yeah, so we don't have to get into that. that. But if we have multiple adjectives, uh, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, adjectives modifying a single noun, then they can't all be immediately in front of it. So I'm just no. wondering what that, you know, does each I, one get a separate article? Possibly. Yeah, I, don't, I can't think of it. I, mean, I don't know. I, mean, I can't think of an example. Maybe I, let's not complicate okay. it right now. All right. <laughs> okay. I, I mean, I just, I don't, we are going to run into that. So we'll have possibly, to have that yeah. question. Let's I'll look for one. I, I, I don't, I can't remember seeing anything like that. But this, an example of the second attributive position is hey, ecclesia, hey, micra, the church, the small one. Mm -hmm. So you can translate it to small church, same as the first attribute. Uh, number eight, what's the rule that governs whether a feminine noun will exhibit the alpha to eta shift in the feminine singular genitive and dative? I'll just tell you the answer. He read, wrote it out and I just copied it. If a first declension noun has a stem ending in alpha, and the preceding, preceding letter is either epsilon, iota, or rho. Then it will form the genitive and dative singular with the alpha. For example, hora. Uh, um, or oikia. Those two have the letter preceding the... Uh, well, the stem ends in alpha and the preceding letter is a rho. That's one of the three that qualifies it. Uh, so it does not shift. Otherwise, yeah. every other letter, the majority of the letters, but, um, but not, many of the words. not many of the words do that, then the alpha will shift to eta in the genitive and dative singular. Okay. Number nine, <clears throat> how can you tell if an adjective is used substantively? The absence of a noun mm -hmm. there and for it to modify. That's right. Yeah. Very good. I don't see any point in uh, writing. Uh, I mean, you may have written out the six now, first six noun rules, but I don't see any point in taking the time to go through that. I think we understand them well enough and you know where to find them. Uh, and we've been using them. The paradigms also, uh, it's good exercise to do them and I trust you that you have, but I don't want to take class time to do it again. Let's do the parsing draw though together. Uh, Logois, who would like to take that one? Sure, uh, I think it's uh, data, plural, masculine. Good. It's logos, uh, it's u and ha. Right. Um, and it means to the words. Yes. There's actually four key words you could use, right. to, for, in, or with. Actually, there's more than that, but uh, those are the most common. Agape, see the iota sub subscript? Somebody take that one, please. Sure. Um, I think it's dative singular feminine. That's right. It's agape, it's um, genitive is ace, mm -hmm. and it's hey. Right. Um, right. It could be to love. Again, it's all those possible. Right. Good. Kone um, ra. This has two possibilities, or actually three. It could be nominative or accusative plural neuter. Remember the neuter plurals mm -hmm. all in, uh, in the nominative and accusative, they end in alpha. It's one of the noun rules. Or it could be nominative singular feminine. It's an adjective. And so the lexical form has all three uh, gender endings, pone ras, pone ra, or pone ron. If it's nominative or accusative plural neuter, then it's evil things. 
used either as a subject or a direct object, or if it's nominative singular feminine, it's the evil woman used as a subject. Understood though, it's not necessarily evil woman, it could be evil church or uh, something that has a noun that has a feminine ending. Right. Uh, Hamartias, two possibilities here. Somebody want that one? An alignment with genitive plural feminine. Hamartia. I got genitive singular. Did I get that right or not? Um, yes, genitive singular feminine. Genitive singular. Okay. Yeah. Or it could be accusative plural feminine. Wrong row, I guess. Off of, let, me let me check myself. I'm, I messed this one up. <laughs> um, yeah, no, you're you're right. I just messed is it, it right? up. I believe so. Um, yeah. Yes, I just messed that one. Up. Yeah, uh, I'm looking yeah, at I'm my looking uh, at the wrong row. Yeah. Okay. So it could be those two possibilities. Uh, if it's accusative plural feminine, it's sins used as a direct object. Okay, here we've got a form of the article, tice. Somebody take that one, please. Sure. Um, sure. Oh. Go ahead. Joe. Okay. Uh, it's stative plural and feminine. Good. Because it's the article, the lexical form is ho, hey, to. Um, it means uh, to the something. Yeah. Um, That's. That's all you can say about it. Yep. Okay. Cosmo. Uh, somebody want that one? If I can get this one right. Okay. Genitive singular masculine. That's right. Cosmos, the, the lexical form. Yeah, and the and uh, genitive um, singular of that is um, Cosmo. Cosmo. And yeah. the article. What would be. Masculine, feminine, masculine and neuter. Oh. Uh, no, no, it's no. ha. Ha. Yeah. Ha. I'm thinking masculine. Yeah. Okay. And then what keyword would you use with that? Mm. Uh. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and that would mean of, of the world, of the universe. Well, universe. there's no article in this. One. You don't have enough context, but I yeah. said of a world. Uh, but with just one word, yeah. okay. Chiron, see the omega new ending? Mm -hmm. Okay. That would be a genitive plural masculine, I think, because I think it's You're Kairos, right. Kairu, Ho. Yes. Um, and that would be of, I said seasons because of, of maybe of times, but- Times or seasons, either way, very good. Evangelio, date of, uh, see the, oh, I said it, date of singular neuter. Mm. And I say neuter because the lexical form is euangelion, euangelio tall. The article has the neuter form. So it's date of singular neuter, to, for, in, or with a gospel or a, uh, Good message. Agathon. There are three possibilities here for this one. Yeah, right. I did uh, either accusative singular masculine or nominative singular neuter or accusative singular neuter. Yeah, yeah I did. Remember the Omicron new ending uh, is um, used for both masculine singer, singular and neuter singular. Mm -hmm. And the lexical form is agathos, agathe, agathon. It's an adjective meaning good. Last one, agapes. Who wants that? Sure. Genitive singular feminine. Good. 
um, agape eis and hey. Good. And yes. It means of love. Very good. Mm -hmm. All right. Hey, we're getting making good progress. Did you have trouble with this translation of First John four one to six? Dave told me he worked on this for hours. I I had less trouble with it after I realized I had omitted copying a line, and once I figured that out and actually put down put in the new line, the thing, it all made way more sense. <laughs> okay. I, mean, I, I don't know. The, the difficulty was in looking up a lot of words that we. Uh, didn't know, and particularly, I found yeah. myself learning how to conjugate verbs and scrambling to see how they conjugated in chapter, whatever that is, way ahead, okay. and looking at the third declensions and all the personal pronouns. Okay. I had to look them all up. And well, you went I, way beyond the call of duty. Well, I don't know how you knew what the verbs were. If, well, like one of these verbs was not given to us. Which one? Uh, I don't remember. I can't, well, yeah. when we come across it, yeah, tell us about it. I don't know. Okay. Uh, that first word, agape toy, and comma after it. This is um, that, that was this is sense. not the subject of the sentence. This is what's called the vocative case. Uh, vocative means it's the naming case or the calling out case. And when you call somebody, Bill, yeah. come here. So well, it's in English what we call a nominative okay. of address. Okay, that's a good way, good but term. That's an example of something we actually haven't been shown. We have that word in our vocabulary, mm -hmm. but I'm like, what is this word? Well, I didn't even know if it was a weird conjugation. So I had to I'm not sure convention. when he uh, introduces the vocative. Well, no, that, but no, I'm confused. This this is the nominative declination of well, the word, it, right? It's identical to the nominative, but it's it's the vocative actually, and the vocative sometimes is not identical to the nominative but most of the time it is you know this by the usage that's right okay I, what i'm saying is we didn't have this and i in order to find it i had to figure out it was actually a third declension noun i don't know how anybody else did this but and i just wanted to know what it was and to just assume his what you know it's a third declension noun and i went and found out how to conjugate a third declension noun that's what takes me some time Okay. <laughs> okay. The reason it's not nominative is because the subject of this sentence is an understood you. Well, that's mm -hmm. that's fine. Yeah. I, I don't. I'm I'm not arguing that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I just went and did my homework and looked it up and found that it was declined as a nominative, uh, plural, uh, masculine. Okay. Yeah. Let me... as, soon as, I, as soon as I hit. Um... This duet day, I went, I went, oh, this is imperative. And then yes, it is. And then everything else kind of fell in place. Okay. Yeah, you noticed that the uh what are you saying? Um <laughs> the I wasn't to do this much work. Pistuit uh, footnote one. This verb means believe with an exclamation point. That's his shorthand notation to indicate that it's an imperative. And with the imperative, you have an understood you. Yeah, always. So you, that's our subject. That's right. How did we know this was beloved? Uh, How did we know that's what that word was? Just, well, take the ending oi off, which is well, I know it's masculine from love. plural, uh, agape toss. It's actually an adjective. Uh, <laughs> Here you go, agape tas, agape te, agape ton. It means beloved. beloved. Yeah. It's an okay, adjective. Okay, so I found that. Okay, so you put the oi ending on it, it's plural, uh, beloved ones. And it's kind of disconnected from the sentence. Let me see okay. if I can find where he tells, talks about vocative. Um, that, I didn't like the fact that he um, gave us that without explaining. Um, vocative case 132. So we're, we're not to that point yet. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure that gave me any trouble. It's, it's chapter 13. Like um, do you want me to 
read any of this on vocative. It, it's clear enough, I think. Uh, 13.10 on page 132, he says, the fifth and final case is the vocative, the case of direct address. I think that's what you yeah. called it. Yeah, nominative mm -hmm. address. Yeah. I, I don't think we had, I didn't have a problem with with what you're with that that didn't bother me i mean i didn't want a problem anyway but i'm just saying you know, i wanted to understand what case i had there and it i had to find out what kind of noun it was and go figure yeah. out what that meant which was kind of a lot of reading yes it was <laughs> and, and, you know from my standpoint once i i have reached the point that i've just memorized so many chunks of the bible that i don't remember the references anymore i, I when i'm reading it and i'm hunting for something I really kind of handle it the way it's described in the Bible. Well, where that's it says, cheating. I'm not trying to I know, use it I know, that I'm way. To do it too. <laughs> but here's what I'm saying. But I, I get to the point where, you know, how where it'll refer to Jesus or somebody else. And it says, and taking the scroll of Isaiah, he opened it to the section where it says, yeah. and he yeah. read. That's literally how I read the Bible now. It's like somebody suggests an idea and I go, oh, okay, that's in Romans nine and i don't know where it's at in romans nine but yeah. i know it's in romans nine so yeah. go to romans nine and, okay here it is and well, so what happened here i didn't remember oh, what john God. four one six was but as soon as i hit not every spirit believe i went oh i know this passage mm -hmm. and then my mind just started going this is a command it's imperative mm -hmm. and so then i just went and started looking for how do i recognize an imperative knowing that's what it was already that's that you can do that well the yeah, way to, the word pistuate is imperative in this case, but it's also exactly the same as the indicative I mood. But I knew what I was hunting for, so that's why I went to see what the structure should look like, yeah. because I knew what I should be trying to find. Yeah. It, it, he's introducing stuff that's um, new, and I admire your the work you put in to figuring this out and you're going to benefit you probably already have benefited from doing all that but uh, okay let's keep going yeah okay beloved comma that's uh the vocative uh, direct address may ponte pist pist um, pneumati excuse me pistuate uh, take the verb first <laughs> do not believe uh, and again, spirit, may is a... may is the form of not you've got <laughs> ooh and may both of those mean not but may is used with the not indicative cases and so we've got the uh, imperative which is not indicative and i know we haven't studied verbs yet but uh, okay. believe not every spirit and the spirit again we don't know how to decline that so that's I, right I it's found a third, it third decline decline. Now. but he did introduce it in chapter four which right. i found very confusing to find a t ending on it because i yeah. thought the root it, it's, yeah the root <laughs> the yeah. consonant. yeah i didn't know that until i third, found it the, uh, i think one of the noun rules so this says is a dative that, right this is dative singular have we got that right? Uh, that's right. Dative singular, mm -hmm. but it's a third declension noun. So it would have a word in it front of it to help it, something such as not, you know, to, with, for, or by. That's right. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, but normally, in this case, right? Drew, what? Except here, I think there was the note about our verb takes a dative sub or Very uh, good. object. That's so, right. Did I miss that note? The footnote one says. It can take a direct object in the data. It can also take uh, it in the accusative. Okay. But, right, but we don't have an accusative here. No, we okay, have a data. So it's working as a direct object. Uh, and I think I may have mentioned this one time. In English, we sometimes say, I believe you, or I believe, I believe in. in you. Uh -huh. It means something different in English, but in Greek, they could say uh, pistuo um, who who makes I believe you or pistuo uh, who, who mean I believe you but it's a dative plural 
both of them should be translated, I believe you, not I believe in you. I'm going to say, I'm just thinking so why would they it's something that? very common in churches, not this one, but very common in churches that would have a similar construction where we'd use an equivalent English construction to this data case would be the Apostles' Creed. Because I, I believe you say, in, I believe in the resurrection. I yes. believe in the oh, Okay. Yeah. But the way they would do that in the Greek is they'd use a preposition, uh -huh. ace. So, so why not? Why? W w I mean, okay, I'm just sort of. Why would they choose in this? Why would John choose to use this dative instead of the accusative? It's a good question, and I'm not sure I have a very good answer for that. Okay. I think we'll find cases yeah. uh, where they do either one, but it would be translated. Uh, okay. I mean, I. In ignorance, looking at this, I thought if if it said believe not by every spirit, there's a subtle difference um, yeah. because it has to do with. Um, it, it, I mean, it's simple enough to say, don't believe what the spirits say. Right. Mm -hmm. But test it. But is it, a little? you know, maybe there's a subtlety that says here, don't put your faith or your belief in God. There's a belief you're, you're believing. Don't believe what you believe by the utterances or the influence by the influences of each spirit. And, I mean, it's a slightly you know, different it is, take, uh, and I yeah. wondered if that was what he was thinking. I think like we the, might be taking the, understanding again the idea that this was an imperative, and understanding how that dative case gets worked around in the English. When I looked at this, my immediate reaction after I recognized that it was an imperative was to translate it, beloved. Believe not every spirit, but test the spirits. That's that's a good translation. Yeah, I think the King James does it exactly that way. Yeah. Okay. So we got that far. Let's go on, if you don't mind. Uh, test or try or prove the spirits. Any one of those words. Um, and then a. That's our word for if. Uh, mm -hmm. If ectu theu estin. Now, here we've got a curious thing. Esten is a singular verb. He, she, or it is. Mm -hmm. But it's used with a plural subject. Mm -hmm. You remember that? Mm -hmm. The neuter plural subject? It's, that's because the Greeks tended to think of plural nouns as uh, an entity. Um, like that's a not collective the, noun? A collective, yeah, a collective entity. Uh, the spirits like water water is yeah or even though it's a mass uh i think there's a verse in the king james that says this people is mm -hmm. uh, um, i forget how it goes but uh, uh but i'm sorry where are you uh, okay. i'm talking about uh top pneumata is a plural yeah it's a Accusative plural neuter. Mm -hmm. That's the the direct object. Uh, and esten is a verb. It's a form of a me. Uh, no. Uh, Where? Esten is singular, but it takes a plural subject. That curious thing in Greek where you have a neuter plural subject and a singular noun. Singular verb, excuse me, with it. Um, I'm sorry, which, which Esten are you talking about? On the second Where line. Are you? Second line. Second line. Are you Esten. That word. Esten. There. Okay, what do you do with, what is AI? Uh, what is A? Uh, if. A means if. Oh, that makes a lot more sense. What was I um, calling this here? But if, but I said whether. Uh, if or whether is kind of equivalent, whether it is from God, but actually whether they are from God is how we would say it in English, because yeah. we think of the spirits yeah. as plural. Uh, but if they are, if from God they are. Right? Yeah, is, if from the God they are. Yeah. yeah. You could use the word whether just as well. And then hati, hati clause, that's uh, because. Mm -hmm. Hati means that sense or because. Because is what I chose. Because many 
What do you think that word pseudo prophetai means? False prophets. False, False prophets. prophets, yeah. Have gone out, Aston Cosmon. Into the world. Into the world, yeah. Uh, you might have learned that by the end of the first century, John the Apostle was writing his epistle or letter uh, to, uh, well, he was in Patmos. He was uh, exiled there and he wrote the letter to the churches in Asia Minor. <clears throat> and by that time, there were a lot of false teachings floating around. One of the most uh, common prevalent ones was uh, Gnosticism. Mm -hmm. Gnosticism took many different forms, uh, but they, uh, this is one of the major false teachings that affected the early church for several centuries. Uh, and John is telling them that there's a lot of them that have gone out into the world and you have to test these spirits to see if they're from God. And in 1 John, one of the tests that he gives is if uh, someone says that uh, Christ has not come in the flesh, one of the forms of Gnosticism was that they denied the humanity of Christ. They said he was just an apparition that only appeared to be human. But he, uh, so, you know, these days we don't deny the humanity of Christ so much as denying the deity. But back in those days, they denied the, the humanity of Christ. So two dropped out. Can I throw in a little sideline here that I yes. I learned that we've you, got some technical problems here. Okay. So while you're resolving those, I'll throw power. this out. I did I learned this uh, a number of years ago when it's asked to teach Sunday school about lessons about Christmas during December. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I you know found out was that the early church did not really preach or teach much at all from Matthew 1 or Luke 2. And Ooh. what prompted it was a reaction to that particular heresy. Uh, when they, one of the ways that they, they countered uh, that particular heresy of Jesus only having been God but not man was by beginning to emphasize teaching about the birth of Christ. Oh, so the, the uh, genealogies, they neglected them. Right. They didn't consider, they considered Jesus's life when he was teaching doing miracles and dying and rising from the dead that to be so important that that's what they focused on initially and then when they the way they counteracted that heresy was to begin emphasizing more teaching about jesus at birth which is what led us into beginning to celebrate christmas ah i see so somewhere early in the church uh just Before a certain time, emphasis. they didn't celebrate Christmas. No, they didn't. And it, it just wasn't an area of emphasis because it, mm. it didn't seem as important as other things. Yeah. Are we back together again? I, I don't know. He's dropped out. I, um, he lost the internet. So let's just keep going. Okay. He okay. may be able to get in or he may not. So it is recording, but Drew is yeah. not with us. Let's just keep going. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, Verse two, um, in tuto, um, we might be tempted to say in this, uh, which would be okay, but English would probably uh, prefer to say by this, you know. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's I, I had written in and I'm like, I like by a whole lot more. So I put yeah. by in, in parentheses. Next I did way. too. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Right. There's a lot of verses in 1 John that start that way. Um, and I did a, one of these buried Greek treasures and, and mentioned several of them. Okay, by this you know that you, plural, the Spirit, ta the spirit of God. Hmm. Is that present or could it be future? Because I wanted to go with you will know. Well, mm -hmm. if, it, if it were you will know, uh, it would be a different form of the verb. Okay. So uh, that has to be present. For it's, it is. Okay. You, you do know. Yeah. Uh, the spirit of God. 
and then a semicolon, uh, or maybe a colon in this case, a lot of times, because he's he's presenting, by the way, uh, we talked about antecedents, uh, antecedents of pronouns. Uh, well, the antecedent means uh, the pronoun is taking the place of a noun which was mentioned previously. Mm -hmm. But sometimes but we the have- The antecedent is the noun that's been replaced. That's right, by the pronoun. But sometimes you have a postcedent, and that's what we have here. Okay. A postcedent is a pronoun that that replaces a noun that's going to be mentioned pretty soon. So uh, actually, this is not a noun so much as a, a statement, uh, a phrase that's going to be, um, and this is the pronoun that refers to the, it's, uh, to the thing that's going to be said. Okay, so that's why we have the colon there. Uh, by this you know the spirit of God, colon. Every spirit. And then ha, that's a relative pronoun, which we haven't studied yet. It's coming up pretty soon. He tells us that, that. Or, or which would be acceptable, mm -hmm. that confesses, homologe, he, she, it confesses that Jesus Christ in the flesh has come. And Jesus Christ has come in so the flesh. When I looked up his, tried to look at these verbs and how they were yeah. defined, I, I, I found them saying is confessing. And okay, it, that, that seems to be, a, well, no. I, I'm, I'm like, because Dave's got a good wrote, point. I wrote is professing and I'm like, well, no, I, I don't better. know. In a slightly different tense in the English, and I, I'm not, uh, I don't know the verbs. So I said, well, fine, that is confessing. Okay. You've got a good point, Dave. Um, the present tense in English has two ways of expressing. Uh, you can say he confesses or he is confessing. Right. Both he confesses is a simple present, uh, but he is confessing. That's a continuous present. Yeah. It's the got the idea of something, an action that's going right. And continuing. I, I only got to that by looking in mountains, trying to digest his mm -hmm. verb stuff, which we haven't covered. Yeah. So I, maybe I missed something, obviously, in, in trying well, to read that. I, I, I realized what have, I wrote probably is not how anybody translates it. So I, I thought, well, all right. <laughs> but it's mo much more common in the Greek to use the continuous aspect of a Which verb. would be is confessing. Is confessing. So yeah. are you saying that that Greek could be interpreted either, could be translated either way? Yes. But it's a translation choice that we translated yes, that it confesses? Yes, it is. Uh, Context will help you decide when whether to translate it as a simple present or a continuous present. They can argue for weeks at a new translation. No, no, that's okay. I just looked at it and did it in the straight, simple, literal way that mm -hmm. the Greeks seem to be, which is confessing, which isn't making that jump to the English confesses, which is more common in English. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, it's kind of interesting. It means that it's right now here. It's right here now, right now. Yeah. It's confessing to me, like right now, yeah. which is more powerful in a sense. It is. I think so. I, I don't know. Um, just wondered. Okay. Um, another thing uh, I just heard uh, Ray mention, you could uh, translate that word professes or is professing. Okay. Okay. Confessing or professing, professing is the same Greek word. I, th I think what it, in my mind, maybe I'm understanding this wrong in the English, but I, in, in the Greek doesn't make a distinction, but it almost takes it from being an immediate personal thing. The spirit is confessing mm -hmm. as opposed mm -hmm. to the spirit confesses, which means it's a hypothetical. Maybe somebody else encountered it. It might not be what I heard. Yeah, but if it is confessing, thing. yeah, it's not a general yeah. thing. It's like, this is really actually happening. Wake yeah. up. Mm -hmm. What's it mm -hmm. saying? And you, you could do it either way. Yeah. Okay. Um, and and okay. I think that might be a, a very good way to translate it. Yeah, I don't know. Every spirit that is confessing Jesus Christ 
has come in the flesh is a true spirit. But everyone that's not confessing that is a false spirit. Where are you? Uh, um, oh, I'm just making. A oh, oh, yeah, that's okay. I'm, sure I'm like, wait a minute, no, no. It, it is from God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I'm just. I want to jump ahead. <laughs> okay, but uh, that's that Gnostic error. Uh, so. They did not confess that Jesus Christ came in the flesh. Yeah, right. Uh, and then four three, I guess that's, and every spirit that does not confess uh, right. Jesus is not from God. Now, I made a comment. I don't know whether you picked this, picked up on this, but uh, the article there with Yesun, Tan Yesun, um, this is something I found in Greek Grammar Beyond the Basics, but it's not that hard to understand, and it's an important thing, I believe. This is an anaphoric use. The word anaphoric comes from ana, which means again, and pharaoh, which means to bring, to bring again. It's a reference back to a previous mention. Well, it mentioned Jesus in the sentence before, uh, okay. the one, the person who confesses Jesus has come in the flesh, mm -hmm. is from God. Now it's talking about uh, the one that does not confess the Jesus, uh, you could the translate Jesus. it this Jesus. It's, or the same. The, yeah, the previously mentioned Jesus. Yeah, uh, the, yeah, the for, aforementioned Jesus. Huh. Yeah. Now, um, there's a verse that makes use of that anaphoric idea in James 2.14. Oh, uh, because really, yeah, one is Jesus Christ is the one that's specified and the next one doesn't say jesus christ no it just says jesus but yeah uh, same person yeah well i don't think it's, there's yes, any... it wasn't an uncommon name yeah. yeah yeah well their context leaves any leaves out any doubt i mean that you, you certainly wouldn't be confessing that True. That, uh, any old yeah. jesus is true i'm just saying <laughs> what would it from God. be the, the reason for doing oh. that everybody anyway. named jose <laughs> right that's what i say it's, it's just the the reason for doing that in Greek. Well, in do general. you remember, though, in, in Galatians, um, where Paul says um, about the gospel, a different gospel. Right. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I can see how that would be important. Yeah, if anyone there. brings you a different gospel. Different gospel. Yeah. Another well, narrative. It's, it's, yeah. Well, it's, I think it's stronger than that. An anthem, Let him be accursed. Yeah. Yeah. Even if an angel does it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, and here's uh, why, because not every spirit comes from God. Don't yeah. believe them all. Okay. Continuing on. <laughs> uh Kai Tuta. By the way, Tuta is he gives us the um meaning um, this. That's uh what's called a demonstrative pronoun. You've uh -huh. got uh, uh yeah. tutos and you've got a kanos. Tutos is this. A kenos is that, or if you got plural, it's these versus those. Uh, tuta or tutas, masculine form. I'm just making comments now about that word. Uh, that's what's called the near demonstrative. Mm -hmm. This book, rather than that book. Uh, so, tut are you okay, Dad? Oh, the pain up. is coming back. Yeah, that's, um, that's, that's I'm sorry. We keep this. So you're at the end of yeah. I see where you are now. Kai Tutas. Yeah. Kai uh, um, and this Esten is uh, Ta. Now he look at that. You've got Ta, and you've got two right after it. Both are forms of the article. He's got a footnote three. What word has been omitted that ta would normally modify? You know? No. Well, <laughs> the only neuter that we've been talking about is ta pneuma, yeah. the spirit. And it, that was previously mentioned um, in um, the sentence before, every spirit that does yeah. not confess. So, sure. Uh, he omitted the, the word spirit, pneuma, 
Um, I'm, I'm losing myself here. Sorry. Yeah, you, yes. you found a place? No, I'm I'm looking at my own notes because I'm trying. You know, I wrote it out. Okay. I'm to, yeah, never mind. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm back where I'm okay. going. And this is the, and I put in parentheses, spirit. The spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Of the Antichrist. Uh, this looks weird to us um, to have. The thing that's missing has to do with a ta, not the. That's what was confusing me about his question. No, ta -ta the thing is, that's missing is the noun, the ta modifies. Yeah, the ta, yeah. but foot, is that footnote four where it says. No, footnote three. three. Yeah. Oh, what word has been known? What word has been omitted that ta would normally modify? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. that makes sense. Yes. Numa, yeah. which was previously yeah. referred to. Yeah. Okay. So, but but here, this is it going is to happen. Thing. You'll have a repetition of the article in two different cases or even genders. Um, that's because they omit something that is understood. Uh, Different cases is easy to get. Different yeah. genders, because that's that yeah. Well, you got that here. Well, no, yeah, yeah, right. Because this ta has to do with with pneuma. Yeah. That goes before it, and um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I figured out what that was, but so this is a construct well, that we saying. can see. You're not saying different gender from what the antecedent or no, no, no. is. You're saying di di different from the, the immediately preceding. Article. article. Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. See, yeah, that the first one is nominative singular neuter. Yeah. The two, though, is genitive singular masculine. Yeah, I thought you were saying different genders from from whatever was the noun that was no, referred no. back to. Like, that makes no sense. No. But you'll see that once in a while, the, no. the two forms of the article right together. Um, this is the spirit of the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. And then you've got a relative pronoun again, which uh, he didn't tell us again, but it was <laughs> two lines before, uh, which or that you have heard. Yeah, although I put that up, which you have heard. Uh, well, it's actually nominative, you have accusative heard. singular nominative. I don't know. That you have heard, that's what I said. Uh, and it doesn't matter, does it? It doesn't what? Does it matter that or which you have? No, heard? that or which is equivalent. Uh, which you have heard that it is coming. Urkatai is he, she, or it. Yeah. And it, the Antichrist is actually um, masculine, Antichristos. That uh, it is coming. But we refer to yeah. the Antichrist as a neuter in English. Well, maybe we, maybe it could be referred to as a E. I was going to say, we tend to, perhaps even more so than the Greeks, if I understand this correctly, personify the Antichrist. You're, the right. You're right. You're right, Ray. I think I should change that to he instead of it. He, the Antichrist, is coming. Is coming. Oh. I would have said it, but you think it's better he. I, I said sense. He is coming into the world. Well, it is now in the well, world and it changes. But how would I mean again? Um, that censor because is, yeah, it would, in, it would be sense in the sense in this sense in the S. -E perhaps the reason, the because. reason, yeah, because because he is coming in and now is in the world. That's why you heard him. Yeah. That's how I took it. Yeah, yeah. I'm I not think sure any one of those three would work. I don't know how it's actually translated. I didn't go look it up, but I don't have that memorized. <laughs> well, that one, I think that's the way it is in the Bible, most Bibles. Okay, here's another case, Dave. Erkatai, uh, <laughs> uh, he gives us, he sure it is coming. Well, that uh, is coming is the continuous idea instead of mm, yeah, that yeah, he yeah. comes. Okay, yeah. And I think it's, it's proper to translate he is coming. It's the same. In the Greek, it's the same. Conjugation, it is, the it's okay. the same form, okay. It's the present active indicative, yeah. And now, kai nun, uh, in the world is he is already, and now, 
he is already yeah, in the world. I translated that to the world, and I did not like that translation. Yeah, dative, um, dative is kind of slippery. It, it, you can use so many different key words, and they're not all equivalent. I know. I know. Um, Dative's like that in any language I've ever studied. It. Really? I'm, I'm thinking about the Antichrist, what you said. Okay. Um, the Antichrist isn't specifically a person in, in most necessarily at all. There is a verse about there are many antichrists that's right in first and, john it says and, that and and so in that context i'm thinking it is probably perfectly correct because this isn't really probably referring to the specific antichrist of revelation you're right because at this time in history in the history of the church there wasn't a personal antichrist it was a spirit right. of antichrist in fact Others who read this differently and revel read Revelation differently would probably argue there isn't a specific Antichrist who they is personified. That, that, that I mean, they, if you have a different eschatology than we share, yeah, some would not say there's a specific Antichrist. They would not say he's personal, right? right. I mean, not a, not right. a human. Because uh, I've, I've seen plenty of pastors that will attribute the Revelation Antichrist to just being a false church that will deceive me. Yeah. Well, um, we understand differently in our church. Right. Yeah, yeah I, I'm in agreement with you. Yeah. I'm just saying there are others, and I think yeah. that they're brothers in salvation, uh, but they may have a share of different eschatology. Yeah. And let's say, and Luther and the other reformers at that time regarded the Roman Catholic Church as having, they thought yeah. that was the Antichrist referred to in, in yeah. Revelation, or if it was a person, it was the Pope. Mm -hmm. No, that's, I, I don't think that Satan has any idea when Christ is coming back any more than we do. No, and I wouldn't think so. Right. For, for each generation, mm -hmm. he has to prepare somebody for being the Antichrist. Remember that that's time when Jesus cast out Isaiah. some demons and they said to him, Have you come to, um, no idea. to, to, to destroy us before the time? Yeah. <laughs> They know there's a time. In the you know, garrisons. Yeah. They, they, I mean, the the way the, the Vikings attacked so many churches, they thought that was the end times. And when when the Rome fell, a lot of Christians thought that was the end times, mm. was, was here now. I'm not saying, you know, that it's not coming. I'm just saying that very ardent Christians... Mm -hmm. have believed mm -hmm. this is but, a mm -hmm. but you, your point is well taken though that if, that if satan knows that christ is coming back but he doesn't know in whose lifetime it's coming back it would make sense that he would try to cultivate someone to be this antichrist and false prophet during the lifetime of everybody exactly mm -hmm. yeah perhaps he thought that judas was his man decent chance of it yeah and i think that's it partially why you can say many antichrists have already come into the world. It's not just, uh, it is spiritual, I think, at that point, because uh, John's still alive. But you could see the hand. I mean, there were a lot of people claiming to be Christ. Mm -hmm. yeah. that weren't, mm -hmm. They were in the flesh. They weren't just spirits. I mean, the, the word literally, I mean, the Greek word means against Christ. It, right. it doesn't uh, mean it has to be a person. Can I interject something yeah. here? The word anti or anti, uh, the preposition in the Greek can make either mean against or it can mean instead of. Okay, I'll find. Yes. Uh, there are a lot of, t both are true. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. The Antichrist is going to be instead of Christ sure. as well as against Christ. I think in John's writing, you know, what he's saying is the Gnostic. Gnostics were, I mean, he's defining that saying the Gnostics are Antichrist. Mm -hmm. He's not getting particular about a particular person that's, that, that no, he's wrote not. about in Revelation. Any, he's not in trying John's to identify writing, any particular person. It, it's fair to call anything that's trying to replace Christ, the true Christ, is an Antichrist. That's an Antichrist. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. Yeah. And right. then the responsibility of testing the spirits falls on every Christian. Right. And we have yeah. ways of determining whether it's false or true. And I have seen some pastors, too, try to define it as 
antichrist in the sense that John's describing Bill here as spelled with a small a, mm -hmm. and the one referred to in Revelation as with a capital A. Mm -hmm. They regard that as being a specific historical person who will come. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I just look over the history of the world. You could just see, I mean, um, you could just see where people are going to deify themselves. Yeah. I mean, all, it's all over the place. Sure. The, the pharaohs, just it's it's everywhere, and and I'm I'm afraid that beyond the insulation we can provide ourselves here, when we step outside, there are huge groups of people who are basically <laughs> saying they are God yeah. or that they this oh, person. Yeah. I mean, it, it it's, it's not going to take over. much for somebody yeah. to start. Saying, hey, we need to follow this one person. Mm -hmm. The Caesars claim to be mm -hmm. God. Yeah. In fact, exactly. in the early church, in the early uh, they were when the persecutions got really intense, the Christians were commanded to say Caesar is God. And you have that verse in I think it's Galatians, he says, no one can say. Jesus is Lord, except by the Spirit. They, the, the um, altar. I mean, the, the options were either Caesar is Lord or Christ is Lord. Mm -hmm. And if you denied that Caesar was Lord, well, uh, that was a death sentence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we should go on, probably. Um, I think we got done with, uh, really yeah, 4-4 four, four is four, where we're at. Uh, humes, you plural, esta are ectutheo, from God. You are from God, little children. Now, here's another case of the vocative. Mm -hmm. uh, technia, it looks identical to the nominative, but mm -hmm. it's... Uh, mm -hmm. Direct address. You are from God, little children. It's offset by commas. Okay. Uh, and you have overcome outtus them. Yeah. Hati. How did you translate that word? Because. That, good. That's how I did it too. Because made zone greater mm -hmm. uh, is yes. ha ha the mm -hmm. one. I uh, preferred he actually. Well, okay. Uh, uh, I, went with he. I saw yeah. what he was suggesting, but I preferred he. I think you're. I, I would. Say, I went with he more than him. Right Either one well, is correct, <laughs> but we're speaking because of I mean, a person. Yes. Right. But I yes. also, as I was sort of going, I started. I read like two words. I was like, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I just recognize I, it, it. It is preferable, I think. I just think of God as a person, not of one. I mean, mm -hmm. and, and then in the case of these of this spirit that's an antichrist, not the antichrist, but any spirit that's blaspheming God is also personal. Okay. It's not it's not nebulous. Okay. Mm -hmm. So greater is he that is in you than uh, that word that word a uh, with an accent and a rough. Uh, breathing is than in this case it could be or in some other cases but than it's than, than, than. than he uh, or the one in the world autoi that's uh, yeah. the plural of autos they now you have uh Oh, we do have a verb there, a scene. They are uh, from the world. And then comma, uh, diatuta is an idiom, footnote four, that means for this reason. Literally, it means because of this. But you can kind of see the connection there. Uh, for this reason, um, they speak, he gives us that, ek tu cosmo. 
What's that? It's interesting. I mean, I did not like this for uh, idiomatic English, but as I was working through it, I came up with um, for don't. that reason from of the world they speak in the sense of because of that reason they they speak speak from the world of the ideas that come from the world because okay. that's where they're from yeah, I have, back to cosmo i have they speak from the world that's what i have too yeah. and their world and their world is understanding but um, where do you get there though? well okay so because man, <clears throat> sorry give me a minute here our tone is the genitive plural um, yes it is but uh, akue is another verb that takes its direct object in the genitive. Is that what put? But we yeah, could have it chosen. can take direct object oh, in either oh, genitive right. or accusative. I I took that out tone to be the direct object of here. Well, uh, does it not? I'm, I'm all right. And the world hears them. Uh, um. Well, hears. Where's um that word? That verb. Akue means hears. Okay, when I went and looked this up, it means understand or learning. I'm well. So that's I'm, a secondary meaning, I think. But aku, we get acoustics from that word. Uh, it means hear. It hears. He hear it okay. hears. Okay. He tells us that in footnote five. Okay, I guess I read his footnote. All right. Yeah, I went and looked up in his in his lexicon what it means, <laughs> and he said understanding or learning. So, all right. Um, I th I think uh, it would be best and, to translate that. Um, in, in the world hears them. Out tone is the direct object in the genitive. Are we okay with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's fine. Um, I'm kind of looking at my notes here. Okay, next verse. Who may, that's the subject. We, and then esmen is the verb. We are ektuth theu. We are from God. Uh, comma, pop, gnoskon. Gnoskon is uh, a participle. He tells us it means one who knows. Mm -hmm. uh, the one who knows Tantheon, God, hears us. Is that almost a plan word? Because um, gnost Gnosticism means, you know, knowledge. You know, in <laughs> yes, they come from the same root. Gnosko is the verb form. Uh, gnosis is uh, the noun form. Uh, gnostic, or in English we say Gnostic, but right. there's no silent G in, in Greek. Uh, the, the Gnostics, they ridicule Christians saying that these people are, can only believe, but we have knowledge. They call themselves the, the ones who know, the, the Gnostics. Uh, they they said that knowledge was better than faith. It's just to read that. So I'm just picturing how much uh, somebody like um, uh, what's his name, McDowell, Josh McDowell, would rip into them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. By the way, uh, Josh McDowell uh, came to FSU campus mm -hmm. back in 1971. Sherry and I went to hear him on campus, and that that uh, meeting was the uh, place where I asked Sherry for a first date. Um, and I can tell you the exact spot where it happened at the University Union. And uh, um, I've seen Josh McDowell one one other time several years later. He came to FSU and spoke. But uh, he's quite an interesting guy. Yeah, he's got was, a terrific testimony. When I was in uh, 
college at one spring break, I went to a campus crusade for Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, rally? It was, no, not rally. It was more like a, it was a week long event. Oh. But they had Josh McDowell in there talking to us two hours each morning, two hours each night. And wow. so every time he got to need two hours, I was like, this is it? I mean, I had 20 hours with him that week, but it's like, click, keep going. And then yeah. he had to go out and do something different. He was quite a, quite a speaker. He had a strong influence on collegiates. <clears throat> anyway, back to this. Um, we are from God. I think that's where we are. Yeah, we are from God. God yeah. hears uh, us. The one who knows yeah. God hears us. Okay. Um, Haas. Yeah, here's the interesting. I, okay, I was, what do you? Got? I was. Let's rate it a toss or coin as to whether to say hears or obeys. Oh, okay. Where is that from? Um, yeah. Where is that from? <laughs> that, <laughs> it, it developed. Did your mother ever say, uh, did you hear me? Uh, mm -hmm. But kind of scolding us because we, we didn't well, do what she said. Well, yeah, I understand, but I, I mean, I, I don't disagree that we should obey him, but, but the text here is not that verb. There was, there was something about the verb that I was looking at. It's going, it's not enough to just hear it and acknowledge it. It means it's almost like hear it and respond positively yeah. to it. I think you got a good point there. And so me, I wasn't sure which to use. Let me uh, look this word up in this lexicon. Um, Uh, a cool um, hear or listen to is a basic meaning. Mm -hmm. uh, if when it's followed by the genitive to indicate a sense perception to hear, second definition followed by the accusative to indicate understanding of what was said. The difference between hear yeah. and listen, hear like or like understand. And observe. That's yeah. probably why I was using understanding. Remember when Jesus said. Uh, he who has the ears to hear, let yeah, him hear. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah. another verse, uh, um, having ears, hear you not. Right. Or having eyes, that's, see you that's not. to understand. Yeah. yeah. Or third definition, as a legal technical term, give a hearing or grant a court trial. That's not one. Fourth definition of being informed about something to learn or hear of. Fifth definition, impersonally. Akuatai, it is reported, okay, sixth definition of discipleship, listen to, pay attention to, or obey, Luke 9.35. And see, that's what I was thinking, of. discipleship, because in go, we are the one who knows God. I was going, that knowledge, that type of knowledge of God is going to require obedience. obedience. Yeah. And that's what I'm we should this really be obey? Well, let me read this for wow. us here. I don't think so. I really don't. He's not talking about obeying. This whole passage isn't about following the teachings of the apostles. He's now introducing the fact but it's, that but it's, who are you listening to? Are you listening to the Antichrist or are you listening to the apostles of Christ? But he's talking in this sentence about true knowledge of God versus just an intellectual knowledge of God. Yeah. And I think this, I yeah. This gets into the realm of interpretation. All right. Yeah. I, I more than that's why I, I was, I was at the it. point I mean, of tossing a coin on. But, but then you're 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 changing the word here. He later on uses obey. I mean, in the same letter, he goes on and uses other verbs. So I I uh, why I I think he's perfectly capable of using the verb there that's going to say something that strong. He uses it later. If you yeah, if you love, you will. I mean, he gets into that. We so, have. That's why I wasn't discounting. Maybe it should be here. Yeah, but, but there are other just, words that could be better used for obey. Uh, mm -hmm. To keep a commandment, for yeah. instance, or to obey. Uh, the word for obey in the Greek is um, uh, hupo. Uh, 
hupamane, mm -hmm. uh, to remain under. That's yeah. Uh, that's a I mean, word for obey. Understand the way it's being used here means to understand the thing. It doesn't mean just to have it pass by your ears. Yeah, he's he's almost using parallelism in, well, in the sense in the sense of comparing these are the bad. Yeah, and here's the good. He, he's contrasting he, good and bad. And yeah, bad. and he's building a case, but not like Paul does. He's building it more in an Eastern model, where they kind of keep coming well, back around and building on it. I would compare it to instead of that, I would compare it to the to the um, proverbs. John writes proverbally. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. He used he that structure. Yeah, 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 yeah. I could see that. Uh, yeah, I did a uh, a study on that. The, the aphorism is another word, but a pro mm -hmm. proverbial statement. What's that? There's a mean? aphorism is a proverbial okay. statement. Oh, it just means proverbial statement. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of that in First John, uh, but let's go on. Um, we are from God, the one who knows God hears us. I'm going to leave it at that. Now, Haas is a relative pronoun. He tells us it means who. Uh, but that can sometimes, uh, that's we, we might have. Hard in English. Yeah. <laughs> I think we had that little uh, that particle <laughs> called on. On is a particle that's sometimes oh. not translated. It's not here, but well, when you've got pos and on, it means it changes who to whoever. Uh, and here we just have has without the on, but there are a lot of places where the uh, relative pronoun without the particle on should be translated whoever. And I think that's this is one of them. Oh, okay. Whoever, oh, I inserted the, the word ever, or whoever. Sure. You need something that can English in English can take the place of a subject because in yeah. this clause, who can doesn't work. Yeah. Well, it's a relative pronoun used as a subject. Whoever is not from God yeah. does not hear us. Hears us not. Does not hear us. Ectuta, that's another idiom. Uh, by this we know. The spirit, that's a uh, direct object. We know the spirit of truth. Okay. Uh, and the spirit of error. Right. Planes. Uh, we get our word planet from that. Uh, planet, the basic meaning of planet is a star that goes astray. Oh, I was wondering how in the world you'd get planet yeah. out of error. Wandering stars. Okay. Um, we, we say, you know, and I, I know that's how we write, but we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Mm -hmm. um, okay. um, these are genitive, genitive, right? <sighs> adverb, ad, adjectives. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, and so we don't have in the English, you can't say the spirit truth and the spirit, error, uh, but the truthful, you know, you in, in how would this look differently if you were to be saying that the truthful spirit and the erroneous spirit? Well, actually, um, these, um, these are nouns in the genitive, uh, aletheos and planes. Those are um, nouns? Aletheia is a noun, and plane, plane okay. I uh, Those are not ad adjectives? I'm pretty sure. Let me know. just check. Um, okay. Uh, I'll check mountains. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Because they're acting like adjectives. <laughs> <laughs> Which... Huh. I took them as, as I mean, they, they look to me like nouns and I indigenous. I think they are. Well, they're nouns. Yeah. 
Uh, Alethea, bottom of 476, right column. Alethea, Alethea, A. Yeah, it's of truth. And plan A. Mark them both genitive singular. Yeah, they're genitive singular yeah. feminine. Right. But that's where we want to Okay. Plan A, yeah, plan A is hey, error. Right. So yeah. these are, they're these are nouns names. in the genitive of, okay. of truth and of error. Okay. Um, <laughs> Okay, I think we did a pretty pretty thorough job on that. Yeah. We got a pretty good understanding, you think? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'd like to present this very big treasure, if you don't mind. Um, this verse was one of the main battlegrounds in the controversy between liberalism and evangelical christianity near nearly a century ago i've got a book at home called uh, christianity versus liberalism by j gresham machen uh, this was written nearly 100 years ago there was a um, convention i'm not sure that's the right word but a convocation of a lot of liberal scholars and pastors. Uh, I think it met in New York during the 1920s because there was an increasing attack by liberalism against some of the very fundamentals of the faith. And that word fundamentals was coined. Fundamentalism. Fundamentalism. There were, I think, six different articles. Uh, at least the main ones were six different articles that were uh, under attack, and they developed statements about each of those. All right. And there was a lot written about it. From that first sentence, can I ask you? Yeah. Well, actually, the first two sentences. Ask you a couple of things. Sure. To make sure I understand what you're saying. Uh, liberalism. Are you referring to the movement that happened in to make to start teaching liberal philosophies in seminaries between about the 1930s and 1950s? I thought it and happened it, earlier. Oh, yeah. Maybe it started earlier. It started in Germany in 1980. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm just was, thinking more like in this country. Sometime yeah, around the 20s, it was 30s, around the turn of the century that it yeah. infiltrated the seminaries. It particularly derailed the mainline. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, denominations. Okay. The roots and of it, when though. When you say evangelical, I take that to mean you are, it looks to hear like you're using that to weigh the term, the way the term evangelical was used in the middle of the 20th century, not the end of the 20th century. Probably so. Okay. I don't know history well enough to know and, when. And things. fundamental, even, well, at that point in time, evangelical meant what in English, what reformed means today. Whereas today, if you say evangelical, people think you mean charismatic. Well, okay, that if that's uh, true today, that's a more recent development. It is. Yeah. Uh, it is. That's because that's evangelical in the 1990s. The umbrella of evangelicalism would include both reformed and charismatic right. and a lot of other other Groups. It's really but, since like the 1990s. Most of the time, if you say evangelical, people think you mean and that's charismatic. Because, yeah. That's because the charismatics worldwide are oh, growing at a way past. They've the expropriated that term for yeah. themselves. Yeah. Well, that's the way I would put it. I'm talking so about you are referring to near the what beginning. We would recognize as reformed. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what I've learned. That's what I thought you were saying, but I wanted to make yeah. sure I understood. What those, I've learned is that uh, those terms have been misused and appropriated by a lot of groups. Yes, they have. But in the late 1700s in Europe, there was a movement that began in France, French rationalistic mm -hmm. uh, Voltaire. thinkers. Voltaire mm -hmm. was one of the main proponents of it, but he wasn't the only one. That uh, attacked all the supernatural right. uh, things in the Bible, rationalism. 
that also spread into other parts of Europe and Germany was one of the main players during the early 1800s. Right. Uh, like yeah, and I don't know all of the ins and outs of that, but by the, uh, toward the end of the uh, 19th century, the 1800s, it had pretty much dominated uh, German churches. Right. And it started to come into this country, uh, into the seminaries in this country, right around the turn of the century. Mm -hmm. And it attacked the supernatural and especially the inspiration of scripture. Mm -hmm. And this is what I'm trying okay. to develop in this paper here. Right. Uh, and then just to ask all that to make sure I understood what you were saying, yeah. just because of the fact that terms have been used to mean different things by different Yeah. Things. Nowadays, you can hardly know, tell what those yeah, terms mean. But, it means. but uh, uh, many evangelical theologians and prominent church leaders met together to hammer out a definition and declaration of the fundamentals of the Christian faith. The verbal and plenary inspiration of scripture. Verbal means pertaining to each word and plenary means complete uh, was one of these fundamentals. And first, there's Second Timothy 3.16. I've got it in about eight different translations. But if you'll notice, um, the first six of these pretty much say the same thing. But when you get down to the ASV, which is the American Standard Version of 1901, and the RSV, which is a Revised Standard Version of the, I think it was 1943 or four, somewhere around there when it was completed, those departed from the main line. Here's what I learned in King James. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction, and in righteousness. Yeah. Uh, look at the RSV. Uh, every scripture inspired by God is also profitable for teaching. The ASV pretty much. <laughs> Now, do you see what they did there? Yeah, they misplaced the verb, which the verb really is. altered the meaning. Okay. Then I've got my own translation, which is based on the Greek, uh, the interlinear that I've got there. Uh, every scripture is God-breathed and profitable for teaching, reproof, correction, instruction, and righteousness. Notice that the is is italicized. When you have a word in the Bible that's italicized, they do that because there is no word there in the original. It's supplied. Okay. <clears throat> Second page. Notice that in the ASV and RSV translations above, the verb is is transposed to a position after the word God. As a result, the phrase inspired by God functions as an attributive adjective. Now we've studied attributive mm -hmm. adjectives, modifying the subject. Scripture, instead of functioning as a predicate adjective, excuse me, I miss, read, didn't read this right. Mo modifying the subject scripture, instead of functioning as a predicate adjective, equating the subject scripture with the phrase inspired by God. The net effect of this is to deny the plenary, complete inspiration of God's word. It's making the verse say, in effect, those portions, implying only those portions of scripture, which are inspired by God, are profitable for, and those four things. If that were the correct translation, it would open a Pandora's box of problems it would be impossible for anyone to determine which portions of scripture are inspired, therefore authoritative, and which are not. Actually, there is no verb in this sentence in the Greek text. So the equated verb is, functioning much like the equal sign in the mathematical, math, mathematical equation, was supplied in English. It's very common in Greek to have a verbless sentence or clause. Uh, by asterisk here, I counted eight occurrences 
of this construction in the King James Version of Romans 8. For example, to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace, verse 6. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, verse 7. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. So it's a very common uh, uh, well, situation. That's not unique to Greek, because as I was mm -hmm. saying before, Russian has no verb to be because the, the Russian peasant's attitude was, if it didn't exist, then it wouldn't be worth me talking about. <laughs> So okay. their construction is exactly the same as something like this. Mm -hmm. They would not have any verb to be there either. Yeah. Hebrews, uh, the Hebrew language does that too. Anyway, and so the English translation supplies a form of the verb to be in order to make sense to the English reader. When this occurs, most translations italicize the supplied word to indicate that it is not in the original text, although implied by it. Since the copula, that is a coupling verb, is, this is another, another name for equated verb, is lacking. It needs to be supplied in English. And the most natural place to supply the equated verb is between the subject scripture and the first word that follows it, God breathed, or the phrase inspired by God. It is in fact significant that an author typically leaves out the copula when he assumes the audience knows where it should naturally go. That's from Greek grammar beyond the basics. Even though Greek doesn't rely as much on word order to keep things straight in a sentence like English does, that's not to say word order is unimportant in Greek. The position of, this, of the supplied word is in this verse does make a difference to the intended Greek meaning. To place the is after God breathed Theopneustos would require the chi to be adverbial, translated also, in order to make sense, instead of the conjunction translated and. That makes the ASV and RSV highly unnatural and forced translations. Another and perhaps more potent argument against the wording every scripture inspired by God is profitable for is the in ASV and RSV translated, is that it would contradict the whole tenor of the rest of scripture on the issue of the verbal and plenary inspiration of scripture. Consider the following verses, each of which affirms the inerrancy in the original autographa and binding authority of the words of scripture, which are God breathed. You shall not add to the word which I'm commanding you, nor take away from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you, Deuteronomy 4. Whatever I command you, you shall be careful to do. You shall not add to nor take away from it, Deuteronomy 12. Mm. Do not add to his words or he will reprove you and you will be proved a liar, Proverbs 30. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Matthew 4.4 4, and also Deuteronomy 8. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot, the smallest letter, Hebrew letter Yod, or one tittle, a small extension or protrusion on several Hebrew letters, which distinguish those letters from similar ones, shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. The scripture cannot be broken. But know this first of all, that no prophecy of the scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation, for no prophecy was ever made by an act of human will, but men moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. And then I testify to everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If anyone adds to them, God will add to him the plagues which are written in this book. And if anyone takes away from the word of this prophecy, God will take away his part from the tree of life and from the holy city, which are written in this book. Because no prophecy was ever made by an act of human will, every word 
every jot and tittle of scripture is God breathed, the apneustos. That's why the scripture cannot be broken and why God warns of severe penalties for adding to or detracting from his word. The prophets themselves never claimed that their prophecies originated from themselves. Their proclamations were always accompanied with statements such as these, thus saith the Lord, or the mouth of the Lord has spoken it, or the spirit of the Lord spoke by me and his word was on, on my tongue. Hear the word of the Lord, which the Lord has spoken, or the word of the Lord came unto me. The word prophecy, Greek prophetia, in 2 Peter 2, 1, 20 and 21, literally means the speaking forth of the mind and counsel of God, pro, forth, and femi, to speak. Though much of the Old Testament prophecy was purely predictive, Prophecy is not necessarily, nor even primarily, foretelling. It is the declaration of that which cannot be known by natural means. It is the foretelling of the will of God, whether with reference to the past, the present, or the future. A summary statement. The wording of 2 Timothy 3.16 in the RSV and ASV, every scripture inspired by God is also profitable, for teaching, reproof, correction, training in righteousness is false and should be rejected. So. I really like this one. Yeah. I would say if, if, if you are still editing it, the one recommendation I would make is at the beginning that you tell people what time frame you're defining oh, the term by. I wouldn't have thought of because that. Because yeah. those terms have evolved I will do that. And their usage during the time frame you're describing. So, um, I mean, I I know this verse is, is commonly referred to. I don't know this uh, history. Did this then become the pivotal verse for uh, this um, declaration of fundamentals? Yes. On um, that issue, yes. And is it the case then that these ASV and RSV translations were produced by these liberals? I think so. Well, now, that's the an ASB important thing is, to know because I, I mean, so I, I mean, I, I understand all this. I don't disagree with it, but um, I'm not just sitting here as a as a student. I don't know enough to be convinced uh, that the translation of this one verse has to go one way or the other, and it doesn't even need to mean what the people who apparently introduced it want it to mean. And it still flies in the face of the face of what Jesus himself said in Matthew 5, 18, truly I say to you, until um, the heavens and the earth shall pass away. Um, I've got this in the inner linear. I'm sorry. Let me put in something I can read. Um, Uh, 18. Uh, I'm sorry. Until heaven and earth pass away, not one iota, not one, not a dot will pass away from the law until all is accomplished. Mm -hmm. This is the English standard I'm looking at. So, um, you know, I mean, it doesn't get any stronger than Christ himself speaking about the Old Testament. And then the next question we have is how it is that we have the New Testament and what our faith in it is. Um, um, we have this verse in Timothy, but when one asks the question, every scripture by God is also profitable. Well, what scripture isn't from God? Yeah, I quite, you can open that door if you wanna open it. Um, but we have had a process by which we have accepted as canon the scriptures. Well, be careful so, when you say we. Yeah. You need to define There are a lot of people that, whoa, that whoa, didn't whoa, accept whoa, that. Whoa, 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 whoa. The church, and then there was a disagreement in the Reformation that threw out the books which were added in during a period in the Catholic Church the in which books. the apocryphal books were taken in from the Septuagint which was actually produced at the desire of a of a Ptolemaic, I believe, king. The Septuagint, as we have it, 
was actually or, or was actually um, caused to be written by a Greek king, a, a Ptolemaic king, or mm -hmm. a, uh, maybe it's the other one. It's a sad, uh, the, I can't remember the name. Is that P-T-O-L? Yeah, that's yeah. an Egyptian. Yes. And that now the Greeks were, the, the Jews were working on it themselves, but the final thing was what this Greek king wanted. The man who did um, the, the Vulgate said, Jerome. Jerome, I read this, Jerome said, hey, I think it's a problem that we have these extra books that are not in the current Hebrew text that were the Masoretic text doesn't have them. Yeah, they rejected so, them from the And text. they said, and, and, and the yes. Catholic Church said, Jerome, you're wrong. Shut up. We want those books, which is why at the Reformation, they went back and looked at this and right. said, those books don't belong. So now but, that, that, that said, we have a canon of scripture and there's a history by which we have it. And it can be examined and talked about. Mm -hmm. So, but the problem here, no, hold on, I'm saying, me. is that in the 20th century, in the time frame that Carl's describing, a lot of the church, the a lot of the denominations. I understand what I understand what people are done. rejecting the inspiration of the Bible. So I, I understand saying, what we, people are doing. You have the the red letter people who who go. Well, did Jesus actually say all the things that they say he said? No, you know, and it, it, he, they, they don't think he said anything. The very same people deny the divinity of Christ. Right. Look, my point being, a serious, a person of serious faith who looks at what we have has to, at some point, to, to, to have a, a serious faith, I have to ask the question, how did we get what we have? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I can't just take for granted because mom said so. Right. I had to go and investigate it. Right. And so in my investigation, I've come to accept a canon, right. a scripture. Right. Okay. Am I going to redo that every time somebody goes, I don't like this verse and I don't think it was inspired? I'm going to look at them and go, who are you? Are you now going to undo 2,000 years worth mm -hmm. of history from Christ himself, who, who said every jot and tittle when he was reading the Masoretic text and his apostles? And you're going to undo now 2,000 more years of history? Yeah. Sorry, I'm not listening yeah, to you. I think we're back to send them to go talk to John McDowell. Right. And, and so while this is interesting about, <laughs> about this text, even such a thing as this, you can't seriously look at somebody who's going to go, well, see, it doesn't say every single scripture is inspired. I think I, I'm know, sorry. That's just really torturing it. I, I think if I was writing this in an apologetic way but not a very treasure way maybe i'd end up comparing uh rsv and the american standard version how consistent they were in where they placed that is right in other words is this is this the exception to their rule or is this and yeah. also it's the other versions they're, they seem pretty consistent. I don't see where they're going to yeah. move the is somewhere. I would want to know why those versions came about that and if they were influenced by that line of thinking or if there was a translational yeah. difference and if there was no ill intent. And if many, many people who then read those believe in the plenary, uh, plenary inspiration of scripture. I, know. I know people who do, who read from those versions. So I'm, I don't know. Yeah, I know one thing is that just about all of those translations were created by a group of scholars of multiple denominations. Yeah. And so generally speaking, what they well, yeah. what their product was was the least common denominator. Well, okay. There was a furor over the RSV handling that verse that we're talking about, same ticket. Okay. And also verse in Isaiah, uh, where uh, instead of a virgin shall conceive, they said a young woman shall conceive. I can understand why they had that translation. I can look at what it was a video. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there were other things in there. Are, I grew up in a church that was very liberal uh, in the 40s and 50s, and my parents uh, were strongly influenced by that teaching and my mom's favorite bible was the rsb and uh 
Mm, yeah, well, this probably was created by the people who wanted to do this. Yeah, um, it was. Yeah. It, it says it was the first translation of the Bible to make use of the Dead Sea Scroll of Isaiah. That would make sense, given that they were discovered in the late 50s. This was no, done had to be before, before that. Uh, they published the New Testament. The 40s. They, they pu published the New Testament in the 46 and the uh, Old Testament in 52. No, I didn't know but, that. But these, these people were Anglican, at, at least partly, because they also produced an apocrypha. Yeah, I was going to say, I know that Dead Sea Scrolls were discovered after 1949, because Israel Just, had physical control of Qumran when they were found. It, it was the National the, Council of important. Churches. That's who it was. It was produced by the National so, Council so, okay, of so Churches. Yeah, yeah. Right. that's the people. Yeah. So it was. It was a. It Maybe was probably a translation with a purpose. Oh yeah. yeah. And he had an I, agenda. I didn't know that. Yeah. I mean, it'd be good to have more of that information in here if that's known. I'm not enough of a historian to really. Oh, okay. But I, I wanted to focus on the right. issue there. But still, I know the, the, the grammatical. Uh, I, I mean, I I I agree that it seems like the place the is belongs. Is really right there in the beginning, where you have a, a, any, um, in, in, um, yeah, you have the verb in the noun, mm -hmm. and then, the natural, and then the natural progression. Israel was founded um, in forty-eight, right? But they spent the first year um, in the, in the every so they didn't scripture go God breathed. They had got the border secured. Every scripture That's God breathed. So it now becomes a the God breathed. Thing. Regardless of when that um, was, is now in an adjective the, role. It's an adjective yes. instead of being. But it so is that this this era, form of of, of this right. is right. a. And that's the, by far the most right. beautiful. So this is a nominative yeah, case for scripture, right? And, and the yeah, just, that's nominative for God. Read. The, the difference being. I don't so small. know the conjugation. <laughs> um, <laughs> I can't remember. This graphe is the noun. That's yes, adjective that's noun. Right. Uh, that's adjective. About that's an adjective. Yeah, it's it's a predicate adjective because of the is. It's a coupling verb. Uh, every scripture equal sign. God breathe. And so other places we would say this is in this is the uh, subjunctive. Not, not subjective. Sub nobody subjective. Subjective or whatever it is. So, I, can't, I can't say that. Um, so this this is the almost standing is a noun and you and you need to make it equative. No, no, it's not a noun. It's a, a predicate adjective. Yeah. It, it's um <laughs> It it doesn't take a direct you know, object. The verb is. Oh, is okay, not, sure. It's not a transitive verb. It doesn't it's, take a direct object. It takes a predicate nominative or a predicate adjective, sword. and this is a predicate uh, adjective. This, like, it's the kind of scripture. It's a God-breathed scripture. A That's the only place that like word is used, by the way, in the New Testament. Uh, we're gonna, we're, it's people yeah, I think I think for me to understand more of the translation questions. Because, I mean, when you look at the whole bulk of it and then realize that the people who question the authority and the inspiration of Scripture down to the verses is the people, this church at council that made these 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 two translations. I mean, it's slam dunk that they were messing with this because the people who came before them, you, you know, you can go back to King James. The King James went back and, and started, I think, with the Latin Vulgate. Guys, I've got, I'm sorry. I've got, so, yeah, okay. What do you want us to do? It's so lovely. Uh, to oh, we're you. still on this thing, by the way. Yeah. Should we close up? Yeah, let's close up. Bye-bye. Uh, oh, uh, you want to stop the recording and we'll pray? Yeah. Okay.